He was exuberant, creative, and undeniably eccentric, but he was also fundamentally curious and loved nothing more than asking questions. I wrote up a list of questions. I'll show it to you. It's written in Hebrew. There you go. That's the list. I asked myself whether in our industry today there was space for both necessity and intuition, or are the two in competition? Today, in order to survive, do you need to provoke? Has normality gone out of fashion? Is being normal actually, in a way, to be a little bit decadent? Is reality what we see in reality TV shows? Or is reality the lives we live day to day? Are uniforms the next big thing? Or is individuality still important? Albert Elbaz, designer, couturier and stylist, passed away on the 24th of April 2021 at the age of 59. He'd suffered a heart attack after contracting COVID. He is loved by people in fashion because as a person, he's irresistible. He's completely irresistible. Albert, I feel, liberated women to be the women that they want to be, to be more comfortable in their clothes, to be more happy in their clothes. He totally understands his customer. He totally understands what the many women wants to wear. Albert Elbaz was born in Casablanca in 1961, but grew up in Israel before going on to study in the US. He arrived in France in 1996 to become creative director at Guy La Roche. Just one year later, Pierre Berger made him the head of Ready to Wear at Yves Saint Laurent. Two years later, he was out of a job when the label was bought by the Corinne Group. When Taiwanese businesswoman Shaolan Wang bought L'Anvin from the L'Oreal Group in 2001, she gave Elbaz the reins. He would stay for 14 years, championing a bold and modern vision of femininity. All the fabrics were originally intended for bras. We made voluminous dresses with trains, pieces we cut out, a bit like scuba diving gear, but couture style. Albert Elbaz loved working with different materials, not just for clothes, but also accessories. For Lanvin, in 2014, he collaborated with Lucas Ossendriver on a daring range of trainers in velvet, patent leather, calf's leather, snakeskin and nubuck. It's a real mix of everything. These are shoes that also happen to be trainers, so they're athletic, but the colours are also digital. There are trainers that are actually quite close to boots, but the base is made from rubber. In 2010, Lanvin launched an affordable collaboration with H&M. Just as Karl Lagerfeld and Sonia Riquel before him, this was a chance for Albert Elbaz to democratise high fashion. You know that the logo that we have at Lanvin is the mother and the daughter, is the two generation, uh, which is also something we pushed also here, is to be more democratic um, with, with the people uh, that will be wearing the clothes. And that's why I love the idea of having the grandmother and the mother and the granddaughter all wearing the same dresses. In 2015, after vocally disagreeing with Mrs. Wang's management of the label, Albert Elbaz left Lanvin but not before establishing himself as a master of Parisian chic and making the Parisian powerhouse a lot of money. It was only in 2019 that he got back into the saddle alongside Swiss luxury group Richemont with the launch of AZ Factory, a project he saw as a new start. He released this in January 2021. I left fashion, but I didn't leave the industry. I was traveling all over the world. I asked myself after this trip, can tradition and technology coexist? Is fashion still relevant today? And you know what? The answer is yes. His vision, to dress women of all ages, body shapes and sizes in the same clothes with high-tech Lycra creations. He offered up trainers with a pointed toe and reinvented pyjamas as daywear. 
He also refreshed the classic little black dress by adding a statement back zip inspired by wetsuits. It was a dream come true. It was my dream come true. Thank you for helping me, and I hope you like this project. I hope you love our clothes, and we have to give you the voice to be you, to love you, to be yourself, and we are here next to you and with you. Thank you very, very, very much for being a part of it. I love you! Albert Albaz had planned to sell his latest creations via online platforms rather than in physical shops. He's buried in Israel, not far from his parents.